Okay, welcome everybody. This is Coach Mark Hart with the Baskopedia Podcast. And my guest today is Brandon Baker of Rancho Verde High School in Moreno Valley, California. How are you doing this morning, Coach? Hey, how's everybody doing? Uh, appreciate you having me on, Mark. Okay, welcome everybody. This is Coach Mark Hart with the Baskopedia Podcast. And my guest today is, there we go. Always do have that problem when I first started. Feeds back on YouTube. Sorry about that. Um, so I've gotten to know you over the last couple of years, coach, and you are one of the premier public school teams here in California. Um, but could you tell us how you got started in coaching high school basketball? Um, you know, I got started actually coaching uh, little kids at travel ball when I was about 20 years old, 21 years old. And then uh, my actual first start was Merida Valley High School, which is uh, my where I went to high school at uh, with Coach Tara Bilda and Coach Borgette. And then from there, I went to Vista Marietta with uh, Coach Ruth. And then actually, I was at Chaparral for a little bit, too, uh, with Coach Coyle. And then ended up at Rancho Verde with, uh, you know, Coach Joe Walter and Coach Dodson. Awesome, Coach. Um, who are some of the coaches that have mentored you or helped you form your coaching philosophy? Um, like I said, I played at Merida Valley, so Coach Tara Bilda, uh, mm -hmm. was huge on defense. Uh, they always had... A uh, really strong program since I was there, and uh, Coach Borgette as well, his assistant. Um, they've been together for a number of years and just recently retired. And then, uh, like I said, Coach Ruth taught me a lot about um, how to manage a program and how to handle all the daily stuff that you have to do. You know, Coach, like all the extra stuff you got to do as a coach. So Coach Tarabilda uh, was huge on defense. Uh, they always have. And then uh, definitely Coach Showalter and Coach Dodson who are both at uh, Poly High School now. Um, but definitely philosophy was defense uh, from Coach Showalter and then learned a lot of offense from, uh, you know, uh, Coach Dodson. They kind of uh, team up that way, so. Gotcha. So, Coach, a lot of people would say if they walked into a practice and they watched you for 15 minutes, they should know what you and your program are about. What what three things would you say you're known for at Rancho Verde? Um, number one, our intensity, not just only our defense, but uh, just how hard we play. Uh, I only know that because other coaches tell me that. Um, man, your kids play so hard. And I think that starts at practice. Um, from the very first minute we walk in, it's intense. Uh, we go hard the whole time, the whole two hours. And we kind of have a like up on the board up here on my screen, Mustang mentality. That's actually our school motto now, um, but we just have a mentality of, uh, you know, kind of the underdog, but then also we don't, we don't have time to waste and, and we're going to, you know, go as hard as we can, as long as we can. And then uh, another one is that uh, we do it together. Um, so we're not in it individuals. We don't have individuals on the team. Yes, there's some individual, you know, accolades that come along with basketball, but uh, we're going to, you know, go out and fight together as a team, no matter what. And then, uh, you know, just um, on the offensive end, we're going to, you know, be unselfish and share the ball and run good stuff and run good sets. Um, and that's, that's you know, kind of the bread and butter of our, our program. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten to know it. Um, I would say in the state of California, you're up there defensively with the likes of Coach Kleckner at Etiwanda um, and have formed one of the best public school teams out there. Um, so, I mean, you're at 2,400 students, coach, and you were bigger until Orange Vista opened. That's correct. Uh, what does it mean to you to be able to build a program that is a public school and get it all the way up to the open division in California? Well, you know, when I, when I got to Rancho Verde, they had one CIF in Division Two, and I beat actually modern day uh, when they had Michael Snare and Kyle Fuller. And it was Coach Shaw Walter was a head coach. So when I got there, I was a JV coach, another varsity assistant, 
And uh, to me, it's like, if you, if it's not broke, don't fix it, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've added things, little th things here and there, but literally our practices are almost ex exactly identical to how he would run it. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, we start off with the basics. Um, we start off with defense first as well, every practice. Um, and then, you know, like I said, we've run good stuff, but, you know, moving up to the open division was a huge honor um, just because Inland Empire teams, there's not very many. Um, it's like us and Etiwana and Centennial that were in it that year. And that year, like you said, defensively, we were uh, number one in division one uh, for uh, points against, meaning we, we held teams that under 40. And that's kind of our goal to hold teams under 10 every, every quarter. Um, and then if we don't hold them under 10, then that, that goes down. It goes down to eight or six or five. Okay, now we got to hold them this quarter. Um, so, you know, defensively, that's kind of our goal. We don't, you know, di shy away from that. We don't, you know, do anything different. And then offensively, like I said, we're, we're going to run good stuff. We never come down the jacket um, kind of deal. But, yeah, we had the likes of playing Rancho Christian, St. John Bosco, who we beat, um, all these top teams. And I did it with a great group of kids that me and Coach Showalter had had the year after we won CAF and kind of developed them. We uh, – two of them – are playing in college now, Jackson Turner and, and Torrey San Antonio, and they were on varsity as a freshman, and they kind of got to see the mentality, the cult. And to me, it's it's all about culture. So the culture I didn't establish it myself at Rancho Verde. It was Coach Showalter before that, the coaches before him. Um, so I, to me, it's all about that culture and getting them, you know, all to buy into either the Mustang mentality or whatever your culture is. So I thought that year when we were in the open division, it was huge buy-in across the board from everybody. Awesome. So defensively is your calling card. Who's helped form that? Was it Coach Showalter or did you learn from others or who, do you, who, do you, who did you study and, and who do you kind of pattern it after? Is it your own or do you kind of take a piece from everybody? Uh, I kind of took a piece from everybody. Like I said, Coach Terabilda was huge at get, being in the stance the whole time, uh, closeouts, um, help and rotate. And then uh, Coach Showalter's philosophy on defense and how to actually teach it. it he's probably one of the best out there um, defensively. And then, uh, you know, I take stuff from colleges, different colleges, Villanova, how they run it. Um, you know, I'm constantly watching videos, constantly watching college basketball, things they do. Do they, do they allow middle, do they allow baseline? You know, how, do they pick up full court? Um, you know, how do they do, how do they guard the other team's best player? How do they guard the bigs? And we just have a general philosophy. And to me, I keep it simple um, with our players. You know, there's not seven different options they could do. You know, there's one option when you're on the ball, one when you're one pass away, and there's an option when you're, uh, you know, in help defense. And that's, that's pretty much it. And, uh, you know, I have great assistant coaches that actually help that and watch that. And that's kind of their job. Who's watching – off the ball, who's watching on the ball, who's watching, you know, boxing out, rebounding. Um, but, you know, I, I, I don't take the credit for it. You know, I've, I've gotten – I'm just really good at taking it from a bunch of different people and really good coaches that, that came before me or that I've learned from. And, uh, you know, we do that. So you say you are more system-oriented, you don't scout base it, you, or do you make adjustments for teams, or do you just kind of say this is how we play our defense – and this is how we're going to defend everybody. Um, typically, that's what we do. But, uh, you know, for certain teams, like if you're playing both Mobley's from Rancho Christian, of course, I scouted them and have to guard them a different way than we would guard, you know, a smaller team. That's all guards. So we make adjustments. Um, but typically, we guard the way we guard. And, you know, either we, either we front the post and that's it. Doesn't matter who the post is or, you know, we, you know, we guard straight up. Doesn't matter who it is. Um, you know, we're not a big jump and run trap team or, uh, you know, press team, you know, we'll pick up full court, but we don't press and trap. But yeah, like I said, we keep it simple on the defensive end. They got two or three options they could be in. And, you know, they, they know if they didn't rotate and help, they didn't uh, close out correctly. They might be coming out or they might get corrected on it. So, um, yeah, I mean, system wise, like that's our system and we pound it in them literally every single day. And I think that's why we're really good at it. Um, practice time with it. Do you spend, would you say 50%? Is it majority of your practice or is it once you install it, you're just kind of reviewing it for 20 minutes a day or, or how do you do it coach? Um, no, like 
honestly, when I got to Rancho Verde, uh, Coach Walter and Coach Dodson, it was a big joke. Like they would literally split it in half and they wouldn't be too happy with each other. if The other guy went over, <laughs> you know, they went our defense, our offense kind of deal. And then combination of both. And then of course, uh, there's a lot of skill basic training as well. Um, a lot of skill based stuff to start off practice. Um, so I would say it's about 30, 40% defense, 30, 40% offense. And it, it's different every day, depending on what we need to work at. And I, I do it different with every group as well, depending on what we're good at, what we're not good at. You know, maybe we're not good at closeouts. We need a lot more work at that. So I put more time into practice with that. Uh, maybe we're not good at help, which we weren't last year. We had a young group. We weren't very good in help defense. So we had to spend a lot of time with that, you know, an hour a day. How do you help? How do you rotate? Uh, when do you get the next man? Stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I would say a lot of practice is that. And then a, a lot of my guys stay after practice as well and put in extra time, extra work. So we don't have to spend that time just shooting all practice. Okay. Um, typically you have some pretty good athletes and then you don't have great, great athletes as compared to some of the other schools, but you have a lot of talent. Um, would you say that your system of defense would work for lesser athletic players or less talented teams? Is it just an attitude and a buy-in or do you think the athleticism obviously probably helps, but do you think it could be done for the less athletic teams? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I've done this defense like at, you know, like when we're, when we're at Merida Valley, it's the same way and we didn't have athletes. Um, it's actually better when you don't have athletes, th this defense. Um, to rotate and help and cover up when they do get beat. I would say we're really good, especially when in the open because guys didn't get beat off the ball. So we didn't have to help as much. Uh, but when you don't have athletes, you're gonna have to help. Guys are gonna get beat off the ball. They're gonna get beat off the dribble. Um, so you're gonna have to rotate and help even more. So that's why I was saying this year, I had athletes, but they were young, you know, and inexperienced. So they had to definitely rotate and help even more. Um, you're in a pretty tough public school league. You got Polly, yourself, um, shoot, help me out. Well, I'm forgetting. It was North Valley View. Okay. Uh, they, we're in a conference now. So our conference right. is, is three different divisions now. And we're in the top division with five other teams. And it's us, Polly, Valley View, Orange Vista, and Notre Dame. Yeah. I lost to Valley View this year in the playoffs. They were. Oh, uh, yeah. So they're, they're always tough. It's tough to play there. North is Coach always Long tough. Good job. Yeah, we, I've, I've had some some amazing battles with Coach Barty at North. And then we've gone back and forth with Pauly now, too, since Coach Dodson and Showalter are there. And then Valley View as well. That's never an easy win. And then uh, even Notre Dame, two years ago, they won CAF or three years ago. And they were tough. It's tough to play in that gym, too. Yes. Yeah. And we, we have one of the toughest schedules uh, along with, like, the, I think it's the Big Eight, you know, Centennials League. Yeah. Um, so what have you been doing during COVID yourself during this crazy time? You've been doing any Zoom clinics, um, just hanging out with family. What have you been doing? Um, yeah, we went on a couple trips. Uh, went to like Sedona and Arizona and stuff like that as a family. Been going to the pool and uh, hanging out outside a lot, going to parks and stuff. Um, but yeah, we do Zoom meeting uh, once a week with my players. Um, I give them workouts as well on Remind. Um, to do it, you know, during the week. Um, a lot of them send me their videos that they're, they're working on too. They'll take a video of their workouts every day. Um, and then, you know, based, a lot of the time now, this past month has been getting ready for distance learning and getting ready for teaching online, which um, I'm having to help. I'm, I'm a biology teacher. So having to help our biology team uh, get ready for distance learning because I have a lot of that. And they, they didn't, they were teaching a lot from the book and doing labs and in class. So uh, a lot of that, the last month I've been doing that. Okay. So distant learning is coming. Um, CIF made their decision um, here in California to move us to March. So we've become a spring sport. So have you had any time to digest what you're going to do with your program with Zoom or things to get them going? Are you going to wait a while? Um, what does the outlook look look for you and your and your school district kind of moving forward? Are you you guys are starting off distant learning, um, like probably ninety percent of the schools? But yeah. what are you going to be doing? Um, so every Wednesday is our uh, 
like we're on block periods, uh, mm -hmm. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So on Wednesday is kind of our off day to do a lot of uh, stuff on our own. So I'm gonna be meeting with them every single Wednesday and doing a workout on Zoom as well. So they're gonna have to have a ball, a jump rope, different stuff every day, push ups, sit ups, all that kind of stuff. They're gonna have to zoom in with me. And then we also talk about other stuff, stuff going on in the world right now, the social injustice stuff. Uh, we talk about a uh, coach that just passed away that they were all, uh, that they knew really well, Andre Spencer. So we don't just talk about basketball as well. We talk about other things going on in the world. Um, you know, and we talk about school on their, you know, keeping up on their grades. Um, they're going to have to check in every week with their grades as well and send me a, you know, link of their grades. Um, so it's, it's not just basketball, but yeah, on, on Wednesdays, we'll still be doing stuff. And as soon as uh, the county and the state allow us to have workouts again, then we're planning on getting back to it. Okay. Um, the, also the decision, I mean, and you have some higher level players, um, you're one of those schools that does the decision was, um, that they're allowed to play travel ball concurrently, um, with the high school team. What adjustments do you think everybody's going to have to make with that? I mean, it is what it is for a year. Um, we're going to have to, to deal with it, but it's a, probably a no-win situation for either side of the coin on that. Um, yeah, I, I just think in April, there's two viewing periods that, that normally the NCAA has mm -hmm. that might conflict, and we're in league that, that uh, week. Exactly. We might even have to change our league games to Monday, Wednesday, so then they can go play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, those two weekends. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, I mean, if they chose to go play on a weekend, I mean, we obviously we couldn't stop them right now, you know, but during the week, they're going to be ours. They're going to be at our practices. Like that's not, that's not going to be negotiable. You know, they're not going to be, Hey, I got to go to this thing instead of miss this game. You know, and we'll, we'll cross that when we get there in, in March. And talk, I've already talked to the team about it. Um, some of them will probably go play here and there, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. But I think the high profile players um, from a lot of the teams in the open division, it's going to be a big issue, especially if they have a tournament or they have a league game on that Friday. And now they're they're not there for that league game. So um, as long as it's only this year, I don't I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. So you were young last year. So what do you think the forecast is for you this year? I mean, what do you what are your expectations, Coach? Um, I think we're going to be really good. I think we went through the ringer last year. We lost a bunch of games that were close. I put them in really good tournaments: Damian, St. John Bosco, Inland Empire. Um, on purpose so they could go through all that. I didn't put them in little week tournaments just to win a bunch of games. Mm -hmm. um, so they've been there. They've done it. They were afraid that first week, you know, a lot of them. I had one returning player, Derek Nettles. Um, none of them had ever played varsity before. You know, they played JV, but, you, you know, it's a huge difference, obviously. Uh, but by the end of the season, we did really well. We hung with Polly. We were ahead of them on at halftime at mm -hmm. Polly. Um, so I have a really good group of guys coming back. Um, really good group of juniors. I have three seniors coming back that are great, great kids and going to contribute. Um, Jalen McCree and David Bell. Um, and then I have Kamani Davis. He was our leading scorer coming back. And Jason Lee was my point guard. Jalen Butler uh, plays all around for us. So I have, you know, 10 or 12 guys that, that are legit. Zamari so Willis, um, Kam uh, Kamari. Uh, I have a six, seven, six, eight kid that's only a sophomore. Uh, Joshir, Joshir. Um, so we're, we're going to be good I think uh, I don't think maybe not open division good but we'll be able to compete in division one so do you think so is that's where you're going to probably land is is division one based upon how you've done I mean obviously that the, they haven't come out yet where we are um, for this upcoming season yeah you think you feel you're going to be put in division one again yeah absolutely because we we're in the open the year before and then division one this past year. So um, I don't see us going down or based on our points and stuff. So do you know who, who would be the top teams kind of this year in division one? Um, of course, Sierra Canyon, um, Centennial, Modern Day. Um, Bosco, Modern Day, um, those top teams, maybe even Rancho Christian again, um, Etiwanda maybe again, I don't know. they lost a lot of guys, but they're, they're good every year. Um, Damien, they're, they got some guys back. They're going to be good. Um, yeah, it's every year it's in the CIF. It's crazy how many teams are, are that good and how many good players we have. 
Well, let's talk um, Moreno Valley. Um, what impact does Kwai Leonard have on that community being from there? I know he didn't go to a Moreno Valley. I mean, I think he started he off. Did, playing, he actually did. He went to Kenyon Springs. I he think went to Kenyon Springs at the beginning and then transferred to Martin Luther King. Um, right. Um, what, what impact does he have on your community? I mean, we talk about it a lot. Um, not only him, Michael Snare, who played at Florida State and played a little yeah. bit overseas and stuff that went to our school, but um, it kind of gives them a sense of they can, they can, you know, make it like that as well. Because he was just a normal kid from Moreno Valley too. Um, and they could actually make it to that stage if they put in that, that amount of work and, uh, you know, love the game that much and, you know, um, keep up on their schooling and actually get into a good school. You know, we talk about that a lot. I actually brought it up this year um, and showed a video on Kawhi, what he looked like in high school. Um, I actually had him at, at uh, Coach Malecki's All-Star Game. Yeah. Um, so I was there coaching it, and I was like, he was just a normal kid like you guys, you know? And then now, now looking at him, he's MVP, uh, you know, the league and stuff. So um, it kind of gives them a sense of, you know, hope that, you know, they could make it to that stage as well. And probably him coming – coming back home and playing for the Clippers probably makes even a bigger impact. So that I meaning they see him every day on TV. Um, I, I know he affects our basketball program. I know he's one of the Inland Empire's favorite players. Um, Absolutely. How, as a coach, me, me and you are all both in the Inland Empire. How much pride does it, do you have that, how the Imp Inland Empire has grown and with the Chino Hills, you've got yourself, uh, Corona, Roosevelt, Etiwanda, who's been doing it for years, Centennial, Coach Giles, Coach Kleckner, at, um, that, uh, Riverside Pauly, Hillcrest, all these teams have won CIF over the last few years. And typically everything was dominated by the Orange County. Um, right. And, um, yeah, it's crazy. So, when, I was, when I was in high school, uh, no one from the Inland Empire, I don't think, had ever won CIF, honestly, um, or that, you know, there wasn't teams like that out here. Um, so it's literally only been in the last few years I think uh, the that those teams that you mentioned have, you know, made a huge impact, not even uh, just locally, but nationally, too. So like Chino Hills, Centennial, um, Etiwanda even, you know, nationally, they're, they're known now. Um, and they're known in CIF as, you know, a lot of, a lot of teams from Orange County and L.A. don't, don't want to play us. And I would say 10 years ago, they were probably excited to play some in and empire teams. Yeah. I mean, it's your league, the baseline league that Etta, that Etiwanda plays in are, are two of the toughest leagues in California by, by far. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I agree. Let's go back to the league stuff is you're the only one, maybe I think another, I think they did a little bit of releaguing. So how do you like the conference format? You were one of the first schools to try it. Um, do you like it? I mean, it, it, um, basically yeah, the way I, it works is it takes the top teams and puts them here, then a middle, and then a bottom, correct? Right. So that, two years ago, a couple years ago when they started, there was only two divisions in basketball. Mm -hmm. So there was seven and seven. I didn't really like that format. Okay. Um, I like it better now that it's five, five, and five. Um, less league games, and you, you have the top teams, and they're only the top teams, and you got to battle it out. So it's, it's tough. You don't, uh, <clears throat> we don't have, you know, teams in our league that's an automatic win now. You know, there was, there was teams that, you know, that maybe they're less fortunate. They're not that good in basketball. They're good in another sport or football or whatever it might be. Uh, but now every league game is literally a championship game. Um, where, as in, you know, if you had eight teams before and three or four of them weren't very good, it was automatic wins. You know, it was like not that exciting either. So every, literally every league game last year was exciting. And anybody so could have won it. So in that case, it's basically preparing you to be an open division team or a division one team because you're you're playing that type of quality every night. Exactly, because Pauly North, they were all division one. Valley View's up there. Um, like I said, Notre Dame was up there. They won CIF. So every every game was getting ready for playoffs, getting us ready for it. That's right. I forgot about Notre Dame. I think I think when we're talking about first teams to win CIF, I think the, my recollection is, is Upland High School back with Jeff Klein uh, oh, yeah. back in uh, shoot. It was in the nineties. I think that they, that they went down and, and won one. Yeah. When I was in high school, it was, uh, we played Eisenhower. There you go. Steve Johnson. Yeah. It was Steve Johnson. So um, that was, that was the only team that I really knew of out this way. 
He, he won one, I know, in 2010 when I was at Baum Park. We, we went to the quarterfinals. I know he beat um, Pasadena, I believe, in the finals. Yeah. I think he won a few. Um, another great defensive coach from the area. Um, and it, it just seems like all the good Inland Empire teams kind of lay their hat defensively. Um, would you say that's – that? I mean – Riverside Poly had great guards and could really score it, but they've always uh, – Coach Dotson, who you've coached with, does a great job there. Um, Kleckner, I mean, I don't know if anyone really thinks anyone does it better than him. I know I know you do. What was the lowest – what was it? Didn't you guys give up less than 32 points a game one season? Yeah, uh, that was uh, the season that we, that we won CIF. Yeah. And then the year after that, we gave up 38. Yeah, so, uh, average. so like uh, the one year, I'd have to look it up. I figure which year, but we were like number one in the state pretty much for points against. And it's pure straight man to man, right, coach? Correct. Yeah. We don't play zone. No zone. I mean, have, have you ever played zone in the last five, six years, even one possession? Um, against Chino Hills. Okay. <laughs> so trying to guard big O, we, we tried to go zone, still didn't work. So and we weren't good at it because we don't practice it. Was that big O with the balls or without the balls? Um, both. Both times we played them. Okay. So with the, with the ball brothers, it was there was no defense anyways. Yeah. So would you say that Chino Hills team is the best team you ever coached against? Um, I would have to say most likely yes. Well, uh, I can't think. I mean, they have like possible three pros on that team. Three lottery picks. I yeah, mean, we played. We actually played Chino Hills when Lonzo was a freshman too. Yeah, and beat them in the playoffs, and that team was really good with Big O's brother on it too. Yeah, Namdi. Yeah. Yeah, with Namdi on it, and so that team was good. But yeah, that that team, they scored a hundred on us, and we've never had anybody score over eighty, you know, like or over seventy. So. Yeah, I remember my first ever league game when I was at South Hills. I coached against um, Lonzo Ball as a freshman. And I walked off the court and told my dad, he's a pro. Oh, yeah. We said the same thing. He was pulling <laughs> up from half court. Uh, I mean, he didn't even score the ball. I mean, he had, they had some really great – can't remember the kids' names. Sorry, guys. But one went to Rice. Uh, right, yeah. They had, a, they had a really good team. Like I said uh, – the team, yeah, they – that year, I believe, they went to CI Finals. Yeah. And they lost to Modern Day. And then the, then the brothers came. Yes. So um, how is, I know you've done the studying and stuff. How, how are you going to do as a teacher adjusting to this distance learning? Is it tough on you mentally to not be interacting with students every day? I know you're doing it through a computer screen, but. Yeah. Cause I, uh, honestly, I feed off the interaction, the student interaction uh, in class, you know, joking with them, getting to know them. Um, I feed off the, the good stuff, the bad stuff. You know, um, there's stuff that goes on every day in the classroom that uh, you don't really get through Zoom, you know, so um, definitely going to miss all that. And uh, hopefully we get we get back in the class classroom sooner than later. But I mean, we're, gonna, we're just going to have to move on. And our district training was all about that yesterday. Um, hey, we're here. This is what we're doing. So let's do it to the best we can and, and give the students still a really good, uh, you know, educational experience. So. Like I said, though, I, I'm going to miss the, the interaction, especially with my basketball guys. Uh, you know, I have ex-students, ex-players come in my room all the time, too, and hang out. So at lunch, all that kind of stuff. So and usually typically I'm out walking the campus at break and at lunch and talking to everybody. So I'm, I'm definitely going to miss that part. Well, Coach, you, and M you're, you watch the NBA, right? Are you watching any of the bubble? Oh, yeah, because uh, there's nothing else on. So... <laughs> and only when NBA t TV allows me, you know, they've been blocking some of the games, but okay. definitely have had it on and, and been recording them. So I ask, I ask a question occasionally the guests, um, who's your top five guys that you would roll against anybody that you've personally watched on television or seen live? Uh, top NBA guys? Top five, like not, not now, but like who would be your five guys that you would put on a court and say, go ahead and try to beat me? Oh, that's tough. <laughs> I'll Pretty give good. you my five while you're thinking. Yeah, get, you're putting me on the spot here. Yeah, go ahead. 
I didn't, I didn't give you that question early. So uh, yeah. Magic Johnson for me, Michael Jordan, LeBron, Larry Bird, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is my five. Yeah, that's, that's tough. <laughs> and I say good luck. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, my all-time favorite player, honestly, is Steve Nash. Okay. Um, just love the way he played the game and how, yeah. he, how he ran the point guard spot. So, um, and he's an MVP. So I definitely would have him my point guard. Uh, yeah. Jordan, of course, best player of all time. Um, Larry Bird as well. I don't think people understand now how good Larry that. was. Oh, yeah. Um, and then probably Magic Johnson and Kareem too. Okay. Yeah, you got Nash. Nash Nash would be more than willing just to throw the ball to all those guys. So, same and, with, and, run, and run the pick and roll with them. Same, same with Magic. Yep. Um, so who do you got winning the NBA this year? Well, that's a tough one. I mean, a lot of the teams are tough. It's a, I don't – a lot of people are going to get mad. It's definitely not the Lakers. <laughs> uh, so not, knock them out of it. I don't think the Clippers either unless they get healthy, unfortunately. I think, uh, you know, they're, they're too banged up probably. But it could be them. Um, I mean, the Raptors look good. Milwaukee look good. Yeah. Um, you know, I, th- so I think the Sixers could even do it, but they don't, they don't play well enough as a team. So you think you think a surprise team from the East or somebody from the East is going to win it this year? I think so this year because of the way the bubble is and the way they were had that layoff and teams are banged up. I shouldn't say this year again because the Raptors won it the year before. So yep. uh, I mean, I mean, even Dallas looks good. Like, you know, it could be anybody. And to me, in the NBA, you got to have scores and shooters, and and then someone that can protect the paint. So. Uh, that's why I don't think it's the Lakers. I mean, LeBron's obviously the best player up there with Kawhi, but so is Anthony Davis. But then that's them too, and that's it. You know, so it's gonna be tough for them to win it. And I and I don't. Everybody thinks Milwaukee. I just don't think. I think Giannis is very good. Right. I don't think he has much else. And Middleton's good too, but they haven't proven that they can get past. I think Boston. I think. No, Sonics I think they need it. They needed like a big three. They needed one more. You know, you got to have three guys in the NBA to win it. I think Middleton's probably a number three guy, not a number two guy. Right, exactly. So they, they need to add somebody. And the likelihood of someone going to Milwaukee probably. Is, yeah, it's very high. Giannis will probably leave before that happens. <laughs> so Giannis going to be the new Kevin Durant for the Golden State Warriors? Uh, that, that, that would work. That would oh be a God. good platform. That would be. Then now Clay's your number three guy again. Yeah, exactly. I think he does well in that spot, though. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, probably the best pure catch and shoot guy there is uh, in the NBA. I mean, so um, last thing on the spot for you: Are you doing Netflix? Yeah. What do you what top three top three things that you that you watch that you stream? What What are you streaming? Uh, I'm not streaming really much. I just kind of go through. But I was watching uh, Punisher, <laughs> okay. and then. Uh, was watching Game of Thrones. All right. And that's really it right now. I just kind of watch different stuff every now and then. So do you watch, um, shoot, Last Chance You? Oh, yeah. That, that'd, be, that'd be another one. I can't <laughs> wait for the basketball one to come out. Oh, I know. Coach Coach Mosley at East L.A. College. That's going to that's gonna change the game for um, California Juco basketball. Absolutely. Which I think I've been to many Juco games, and they're – they're just as good as a lot of college games. I, the, the common stigma, we'll talk about that a little bit, um, is that it goes D1, D2, uh, NAIA, D3, junior college. Like if how people would perceive that to be coach. Yeah, and, it's not. It's not. <laughs> and I honestly think it could go, some of, these, some of these JCs around here in California could go D1, JUCO, yeah. D2. Like, Fuller, um, like Fullerton, for example, that Perry always gets a bunch of guys that could play D1. Like San Francisco Community College up in yep. San Diego uh, Community College, too. They're always Fresno City. Uh, well, you look at their team, too. They're 6'10, 6'10, 6'10, 7'8 at a so junior college. So I don't know what you tell your players. I've had this conversation with mine that no knock on D3 basketball or anything like that, but I almost tell, I tell them to get their grades as high as they can because it's probably easier for me to find a D3 school for them to go play 
Absolutely. Than it is a than it is a JUCO. Well, can I tell you a story about uh, ex player? Go ahead. You might have seen it. Uh, he's at UCR now, but uh, yes. Dominic Pickett uh, mm -hmm. played for us the years before we won CIF 2014-15, and would have probably been CIF Player of the Year if we had won it. We lost to Long Beach Poly in the semis. Uh -huh. um, phenomenal player for us. He actually barely played junior year at our school. You know, played the five sophomore year and ended up being a point guard scoring 25, 30 a game senior year. Uh, Could have went to a D3. Uh, Redlands, some other ones like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Had options to go there. And he was like, no, I'm going to go to UCR and I'm going to be a student manager and walk on. And then I'm going to be the best player there. And everybody doubted him. Not one person believed, no, he's never going to play at UCR. He's not a Division One player. Uh, the last two years he played there, uh, like I said, he walked on student manager. Then he wa was a walk-on. Um, you know, playing for free or play, playing while he paid and then uh, went there all four years. And then he got a fifth year. Uh, he's doing his master's there. And just recently UCR posted it. They, uh, they finally gave him a full ride. So kind of a cool story. It's kind of a cool video. The new coach, Coach Maga, I can't pronounce his name. Yeah, I forgot to say it. Mag Magapayo, maybe. Magapayo, but they did a Zoom like this and he didn't know. And they had the team on there in a Zoom and, and uh, you, can, you can watch it. It's on their UCR basketball. That's pretty I saw cool. It. Had a, yeah, had everybody crying and stuff. Had me in tears too. So, yeah. kind of a cool story of of uh, you know, he could have went D three, could have went JUCO easily, um, but stuck it out and ended up being a Division one player. Uh, last question I have for you, Coach. Um, don't have it on the sheet that I gave you. Is any advice to young coaches that maybe listen end up listening to this um, of how how to build a program or get into high school coaching, any advice on how to do that? Um, absolutely. I think uh, number one is being humble and, uh, you know, following those that, that are great at it. So you're not going to be good at it unless you learn from the best um, and learn from a lot of different people at, at a time, not just one, not just, you know, here and there. And you're, you don't know it all. You know, I can't, I kind of came into coaching at first, like, Oh yeah, I know how to do this. And I didn't know anything. You know, I, I knew nothing about coaching or how to run a team, how to run a program. Uh, but I learned from a lot of the best. And they actually took me under the wing and, ha and spent the time uh, with me, Coach Dodson, Coach Showalter, Coach Tara Belda, you know, Coach Ruth. I was on the phone with him just recently, but he's still coaching me today. You know, he's still uh, talking me through stuff if I have problems. Uh, so I would say get a mentor that's been there, that's done it. Um, you know, like learn from the, those guys and then figure out what you want. So for me, it was defense, run a system, uh, run it, run it the way that we run it. And I, that's the way I want to do it. Um, some people not, might not want to do it that way. You know, I'm sure at Patriot, you guys do it different. That's, that's fine. I, I love the way you guys play too. You know, I love the way Etiwanda plays or Centennial plays. I love the way they play, but we don't play that way. Um, but you know, we, we could, if that was our philosophy, but I would say get your own philosophy and stick to it and make it simple. Don't make it 30 things, you know, make it uh, two things that you're great at. Like, like I said, we're known for man to man, straight up defense intensity, and you're going to have a hard time scoring. That's what we're known for. And guess what we practice all the time, you know? So. Um, and I think coach, a lot of teams know that you're known for that. So sometimes the good old saying is they're already beat before they get off the bus because they know that you guys, as the as the boys would say, you got them on lock, lockdown. Got so. them on lockdown. Yep. I, like we take pride in locking down the other team's best player. That's like, like we go in the locker room excited if their best player had eight. Yeah. You know, like and uh, and our yeah, best player had say, had two. You know, so. Without getting into more details with it, I would say that one of your goals is is to always hold their best players underneath their scoring average. Oh yeah, that's that's number one on the board. You, you go look at uh, Lamont Butler, yeah, Riverside Paul, and you go Rancho Verde, Rancho Verde. What did he get? Okay, we held him to the lowest of anybody. That's, right, exactly. That's, probably, that's, that's happened a lot. A lot. You're calling, that's probably one of your calling cards, right? Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, you know, like I said, we've, we've played really good players. I put them in really good tournaments. We play, we play Boogie Ellis at, at you know, um, that's at Memphis now. Uh, yeah. He's literally frustrated, walked off the court. You know, couldn't, you know, yeah, I can't even score. You know, literally that frustrated. Uh, the only one we've literally never been able to stop was Big O. Had no answer for him. So, 
Uh, yeah. Other than that, we've had, I mean, we've had team score, guys score 15, 20, 30, but couldn't stop Big O at all. Well, he'll be, I think he's moving up the charts, man. I think he'll be a top five pick. Absolutely. I think so. Hey, a great kid too. He'd so. be, be hilarious if it goes ball, Big O. I know that would, that would be amazing. And then you had. Or if they all ended up on the, if they all ended up on the Pelicans eventually <laughs> together. My, I heard a joke the other day about the Pelicans. <laughs> you, oh, take, yeah. you take LeBron off the Lakers and you just have Anthony De Davis. You have, you have the Los Angeles Pelicans with Anthony Davis. Pretty much. <laughs> exactly what it is. So it's kind of funny because it came from them and they traded all the guys away for them, but they have similar players. Um, but – Man, it's been great getting to know you. You're, you're one of the class act guys in the Inland Empire, one of the best coaches I know, and work really hard helping out with lots of events with Coach Maliki, um, hosting things and stuff in your gym, holding all-star games with him, and hosting a bunch of kids trying to get scholarships. And, Coach, I think you do it the right way. Um, I appreciate it. And yeah, appreciate I, 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 don't, I think it's because it's, it's not all about me. It's all about the kids. Yep. And that's why I do it. It's not, it's not for me for glory and fame and be the best coach ever and all that kind of stuff. It's all about the kids and getting them to, you know, fulfill their dreams and get to the next level. Well, um, good luck to you. Hopefully we get to play this season, best school year for you and hope you and your family stay safe, man. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. And then, uh, uh, you know, thanks for, thanks for having me and, and uh, stay safe for yourself. Hopefully I'll see you soon. All right, man. Take care. All right. Take care.